Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanna to talk to you about yet another affordable lens sent to me by TT Artisan. This time we have the 23 millimeter 1.4 specimen. And I had a chance to take this little guy on a recent adventure for spring break. And this was one of two lenses I took on that trip. As you know, I really like doing that. I like plopping a, a lens on a camera that I've never shot with, using the auspice of reviewing that lens to give me some much needed motivation to take um, a lot of pictures and to capture cherished memories. So I'm grateful for yet another excuse to have motivation to take photos. Um, but this lens, it's a little different than, um, I guess the way that I'm gonna talk about this lens, you'll notice is a little different than the way that I talked about a lot of the other TT Artisan lenses. Um, of course, I've been doing this for years, and as you probably know, I have no qualms about taking interesting and affordable, strange, or just whatever really lenses with me. Um, most of the time, I'm not too picky, um, and certainly not for documentary style photography. I'm not too picky. I don't have to have precise optical precision and and um, lenses that cost thousands of dollars um, to be happy and I don't mind manually focusing um, which this lens provides only manual focus option of course it's not uh, not going to give you any autofocus like all of the other TT artisan lenses heretofore so um, like I said I don't mind um, character lenses or lenses that are less refined to add a little bit of flavor um, however, this lens is unique in that regard where um, most of my reviews on TT Artisan kind of character affordable lenses have been favorable generally. Like I usually have a similar conclusion where I'm not going to say that it's optically the, the most precise lens in the world. Of course, you wouldn't really expect that. Um, but yet I have no problem shooting with um, those lenses that they have um, sent me to shoot with to review. There are plenty of sharp where I, where I need them to be sharp, um, and they provide plenty of background um, blur and subject isolation where I need them to, almost always. But um, this lens is slightly different. But the difference I'm referring to isn't in the way that it looks, though let's just uh, admire it for a second. Um, this reminds me of something that might have come out of Star Wars with that very unique focus throw and, um, grip, which I really, I really like a lot. I know it's probably not for everyone, um, but I think it's super fun and it feels very nice. And the, the throw is really well damped. It feels good. Um, just the right amount of throw and it feels good. Um, the aperture ring is um, pleasantly clicked where so many Chinese lenses these days, um, they have that declicked aperture, um, which I really don't like. Um, doesn't give that haptic feedback. This one does have the pleasant detents that, that you'd like to have. However, that aperture ring really isn't the most substantive thing I've ever tried, but it's fine. But the unique build aside, the thing that makes this lens most unique compared to all the other TT Artisan lenses I've tried so far is the image quality, which sadly is unusable at the wide aperture. Um, for me. And the reason it's so bad is because of what it does to the with the focal plane. Now I know that the, there is a term <laughs> for what this lens does, but for the life of me, I can't recall what that term is and Googling failed me tonight. My powers of Google <laughs> were not were not strong. Um, so if anyone can help me out in the comments, I'd be appreciative. I'll pin that comment if we can find that, the exact term. But basically what happens and what I'm seeing when I shoot with this lens wide open is that the way that the lens curves, it brings back areas in the background to be in focus again. Um, meaning the, the stuff in the front, the stuff you're focusing on usually, that's in focus um, and everything should fall off in the background. But as you kind of move over, you'll see there's some areas in the background that come back into focus because of the curvature of the optics. And I mean, nervous bokeh quality, chromatic aberration, lack of sharpness in general, all of those things aside, which are things that I can deal with and that really aren't that bad in this lens, I find that one attribute absolutely distracting and unacceptable. It makes this lens completely unusable for me and not a lens that I can recommend really for anyone, even those looking for interesting character, sadly. 
which is a shame because of how pretty this affordable little package looks and also for the fact that um, it can focus so dang close which really can be fun at the close focus distance you need to worry less about things in the background coming back into focus like I was talking about so it's not as big an issue the fall off is actually quite smooth and pleasant and man it can get close well I can't find the official reproduction ratio of this lens online anywhere and documentation it does look like it's somewhere around uh, just over maybe a one to two which makes it almost a macro lens so that's really cool so if you want a really cheap near macro lens or if you never plan to shoot wide open with this thing um, and where you want pretty much everything in focus all the time then it's fine you'll get a lot more distortion than you will with more precise lenses but that's easy to fix in post and things are fairly sharp when stopped down and I'd have no problem using this for more static landscape shots that aren't necessarily anything for professional or print use. But then again, if you plan to shoot macro and you're on a budget, I'm not sure why you would get this one at all when TT Artisan provides us with a really, really great performer in my opinion, the 40 millimeter 2.8 macro lens. It's the exact same price and it's a no, no brainer really if you're, if you're gonna shoot macro, you just get this one. Um, so I can't think of much of a reason at all. Um, to go, go for this. Um, there are going to be many 23 millimeter lenses for the same price or less of the vintage variety that you can adapt to Fuji um, and you'll get far better results. Um, but that's all I've got on this lens. Short little review. Sadly, not the one that I'm gonna be highly recommending to anyone, but I hope you enjoyed the video anyway and that the photos were somewhat interesting. But as always, remember to do good with your cameras and we'll talk to you again real soon.